touch me and shook my hand. Right. So why you shook my hand? I. You look at me. You didn't know what I was going to do. You're a little bit nervous because these people are watching. You're like, oh, God. Uh, so there's that anxiety, but it, but it's the same anxiety, same kind of uh, different tone, but it's a, a kind of anxiety my experience out in the world. If a stranger approaches you, you don't know what they're going to do. Um, but you made an assessment. You look at me. You're like, okay, he's making eye contact, but he's not glaring at me. He's, he seems relaxed. He smiled. He walked toward me, but at a at, but at a pace that seems like socially reasonable. It didn't alarm me. My hand came out, I smiled, you recognize that as a social greeting, everybody recognizes that in this culture. So you responded, you shook my hand. You made an assessment, and then you responded. Okay, I'm gonna do something else, just respond. Okay. Okay. However you want to, okay? <laughs> All right, so <laughs> uh, automatically, <clears throat> so that's the point. Automatically, you, there's a different vibe. You don't know what I'm gonna do, but you don't like it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the thing that we wanna, the message we always wanna get out to our students too, is like, Anytime you don't like the vibe you're getting from somebody, you deny access to your body. Okay. Um, I also want to, sh so she started, you're starting in a socially, this is a socially comfortable place. You're standing square to me, offering me your whole square. But as soon as I, you felt any kind of threat, you bladed away from me. That's a natural thing to do. All human beings with no training just bl blade away. They'll try to put some distance between themselves and the threat. But you notice when we practice self-defense, we do it like this. What is this? <laughs> this is completely weird. I mean, this is, this is an artifact of being in a martial arts school. We learn to stand like this. It's against every natural inclination that we have. Instinctually, when there's a threat present, we gain space from the threat. Okay? This is where you'll operate from when you do real self-defense. You will not stand square. It just won't happen. So I, I like to think that whatever we practice, whatever we train ourselves to do in here, is what we'll do out there. If you train yourself to let a threat approach you and stand square like this, that's what you're going to do under stress. Maybe. You're either going to do what's instinctively or what you've trained yourself to do through repetition. We train ourselves to do this a lot. So my first, uh, my first uh, sort of rule, I don't believe in rules, but this is a rule, is Chumbi has no place in self-defense. Okay? Let's free spark. She does that. She does a free spot like this. Nobody does that, right? But it's like, get a fighting stance. Well, why would we not be in a fighting stance or some kind of ready position, at least an athletically ready, ready position, when you're facing a threat? So, so that's what I'm going to hammer today. Um, let's do something else. Do not really hit me. Because <laughs> I'm not going to block and I'm not going to okay. move. Okay. I had a bad experience once, so I'm really clear. Punch me in the face. Okay. Bang. Okay, so what's attacking me? Okay, she is. Yeah, she is. Most people <laughs> will think her hand. Her hand is not attacking me. She's attacking me. Her hand is not my problem. She's the problem. So it's important that we orient toward the problem appropriately, not... So when we practice self-defense, I'll grab my wrist. I get so... Oh, she's grabbing me. This is not the problem. That's the problem. Okay. So part of self, a lot of self-defense is correctly identifying what the problem is and then solving the right problem. The risk graph is not the problem. The assault is the problem. Okay. So to my mind, real self-defense, not, not the sequence that we're going to learn, but the, but the real, real thinking is if she's going to grab me, why is she going to grab me? She's going to pull me to a vehicle. We just heard that story. She's going to pull me into a vehicle. She's going to pull me into a doorway. She's going to pull me behind the cover to do something gain access to me. So real self-defense, come grab me, bang, why would I do anything else, right? Address the threat, not these other things. Okay. Now that's, 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 a different, that's a different workshop, that's a different seminar. Okay. Today, the Tang Soo Do self-defense sequence, that's what I want to focus on. Okay. Got my wrist? Uh, if who, she's the bad guy, I'm the good guy. Because she's the one attacking me. Uh, hang on. Who has the advantage here? The bad guy or the good guy? Whoever initiates. Who's the tactical advantage? What? Whoever initiates. Yeah, she, she's going to initiate. She's the bad guy. She has the advantage. because She's going to move first. She knows when the assault's going to happen. I'm the defender. I don't know when the assault's going to happen. I have to wait for it. I don't know what she's going to do. Okay. Um, action will always beat reaction. Now, um, <clears throat> 
because action is going to be reaction, um, we take turns. So she goes to punch me. I have to decode the, th oh, it's coming. I have to do something. Okay. I have to decode the threat. Oh, then I have to make a response. Um, the more complex my responses are, the longer it's going to take me to do them. Okay. Um, these self-defense, all the self-defense sequences that we're going to learn in, in the Tang Soo Do curriculum involve her making a mistake that gives me a chance. Do you know what the mistake is? Think of what it is. She's, she's going to move first. I have to see it. I have to see it to, to deal with it. Think about all the self-defense moves that we do. What's the mistake she make, that the, the opponent makes in the self-defense sequence? They're going to assume your thought process is a certain way. Rather than coming in at her, I think they're going to assume that you're going to back away. That's possible, yeah. I guess that's part of it. Yeah, that's an element. I didn't think about that. What? I think that they're, they're not thinking that you're going to be able Spot. to react. Mm -hmm. Right, so maybe they're counting on me being passive. Right. But to me, the bigger one is if I have the advantage, because I'm going to move first, the best thing I can do tactically that makes the most sense for me as an attacker is to hit you. I give away my advantage by grabbing you. Now you get a turn. Right? If I hit you first, by the time you decode it, maybe you got hit. But if I grab you, oh, it just gave away my advantage. Okay? I mean, that's a tactical error. So that's what these techniques capitalize on, is the attacker's error. That's what this, all of this whole sequence is about. Okay? So here's what I'd like to do. Um, I just want us to practice uh, techniques one and two. And I, just want, I just want you to get a partner. We have the whole dojo, so don't worry about having to stay in this little space. And, and for the time that we're together, I'd like to constantly be changing partners. And I don't want to tell you who to work with. So I just need you guys, when you practice once, I call you back and I say, go practice this again. Find, look around, see somebody you haven't practiced with, bow to them, practice, okay? Um, if you always stay with the same partner in a seminar, anything you learn in the seminar is likely to get bound to your partner. Because the visual array sort of becomes to dominate. So, if Jenna, if we practice together, then the first time I face I'm like, uh, it's gone. But if I'm, if I'm always changing partners, I'm going to generalize the skill to lots of different body shapes, different sizes, all that stuff, and I'll get better generalization of the, of the skill. So always change partners each time, okay? All right, so here's what I want you to do. Um, find a partner, bow, and some, we're going to have a one group of three, I guess. Um, so just efficiently, I want to see technique number one and technique number two. Okay? I just want to see it, and then we'll get back and talk about what, what happened. Okay? <coughs> She's got the advantage. I have to process what she's doing, I have to decode the threat, and then I have to respond to it. Okay. The first thing I do is this, then I'm hit. Okay, because I've misidentified the problem. The problem is not, the problem is not this, it's this. You see what I'm saying? So I can gain some advantage back if I identify the problem and respond to the problem, which is her. So grab me, boom. I'm not going to let her grab me. Or I'm not going to respond to the hand first. I'm going to respond to her, and I'm going to take away, I'm going to break her balance. I'm going to acquire a target. I'm going to transfer energies. And sorry, whatever, the, whatever I'm going to do, I am not going to respond to the irrelevant detail, which is what the grab is. All right? Now, so I want you guys trained. It's really, actually really good. Um, this is, you guys are a different level from most of the people I, I'm seeing trained. A lot of people that we're seeing training do this sort of thing. So I'm grab my wrist. This is number one, and this, I think this is the way we're taught it as a beginning thing, and I, I haven't seen, uh, I see this kind of thing. That's too far, right? Because if I come away, <coughs> she sees me, oh, and now she can stop me, right? So um, I've also seen, you guys are very efficient with each other, but I've also seen some of you guys practicing with larger men, and have a hard time even breaking so, um, so that makes it really hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Okay, um, so I'm going to try to get away from it. You see that? And it's hard. And then what happens is my body starts to lean away and it starts to pull. And I don't know if you've experienced this working with yeah. bigger men. Yeah. And then you feel strain where? So mm -hmm. Because the axis has moved, the fulcrum has moved from here to here as I try to move back mm -hmm. away from the thread. What, so what my suggestion is this. She grabs tight forward. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, you know, you're, this is narrow and it gets wider as you come here. 
rather than back. The other thing is, if you, it's hard. But what happens is, because we're not used to always moving our feet well, my upper body moves back behind my bottom. My balance is gone. Even if I break away, I'm here. And if she keeps coming, because her intent was to, to grab me, it's not over because I got away. She's coming and she's going to be on top of me. All right. So, um, so I want to practice is looking at it this way. And then you're, you have access to the part. Uh, when we practice today, and I'm going to suggest to you when you go back to practice with, especially find a guy, a big guy that you can practice with. Um, but somebody who's not going to be a dick. You know what I mean? That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you want to find a partner. You want to find, find a partner who will help you learn, not somebody who will test you and show what they that it won't work. You know, all that stuff, that weird dynamics that men bring to everything. You know? It's like sometimes you ask your instructor for help, and they don't help you. They show you how much they know. It's like I, I, I don't. I know. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, you can do that. You're six foot two. Excellent. Yes, very strong. You can do all those things. I can't do any of those things because I don't have the same body. So here's the way I would like us to practice all the things that we practice today. You can do the breakaway as fast as you like. The counter, I want you to do full contact, slow motion. Okay? You can do this part. You can do this part as fast as you like. But the, the counter, I want you to go slow motion, full contact. I want her to feel the weight of your body and arm into whatever the target is. What this, what this kind of practicing allows you to do is see where is the target I'm actually hitting. Because a lot of us do this. What was my target? There's no target. I made a fast motion. I felt oh, I felt really good. And I got to go on to the next skill. So instead of, you, instead of learning a usable skill to use, which is like how to acquire a real target if there's real violence, using my body weight transfer energy to the target to put her down. Because in a real self-defense, men are more likely, if they're, if they're in a castle with each other, they're probably as likely to be some sort of like a monkey dance. <laughs> you know, like against each other, you know, escalating each other. Women, if you're in a fight with a man, you're probably fighting for your life. It's not a contest, it's not a pissing match. It's trying to kill you, or rape you, or hurt you. So it's a different dynamic. So you guys need to practice, maybe even more than men, how to put them down. Now, when we do real self-defense, like if we ever do a self-defense clinic, or whatever, I'll say things like, um, the time to take the fight out of them is before it goes physical. Hey, man, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was your parking place. You can take it. Let me just move my car. Sorry, I didn't even see that. Or that's one way to take the fight out of them. Or, or another way to take the fight out of the fight, and it's like, no, you stay right there. No, do not take another step forward. We're done here. That's another way to take the fight out. And there's different ways to take the fight out of the person so that they won't pursue the, the aggression. They'll go away. There's lots of ways to think about that, and we can do that in another time. Once it goes physical, my concern is no longer to take the fight out of them. It's to take them out of the fight as fast as I can. Every moment it goes longer is another moment I get I'm more at risk. The person your guys are fighting is stronger than you. Are they? Why would they attack you? If they're stronger than you, every minute, every second it takes you to get this thing resolved, once it goes physical, is another chance at failing. So you have to put them down as quickly and efficiently as you can. That means using your body weight behind every strike to the maximum, to the best target. So as we practice today, not just... What was my target? I don't know. So I want you to have full contact. Full contact slow motion. That's my contact slow motion. If I'm going to shoot, if I'm going to use the tempo, then I want it to be, right? my body's going to come through the target. So all of my mass, all of my considerable mass, <laughs> will go through the target. So that's what I would like us to practice differently. So every step of the way, where's my balance? How am I using my hip? If I want to go through six to the edge, I just stay there for 10 or 10 seconds. If I, if I break away here and I want to send this through her skull, it's not just the arm. Right? My hip, everything goes through. Wham! So all of my body moves.
moves in this axis and, and then this weapon at the end of this churning thing delivers by body mass through the target. That's the way we have to think. It's a different way to train. So when we do this stuff, you might spend a half an hour on one technique. Because every time, every repetition that you do that's perfect, every repetition you do is efficient, you develop a sort of neuromuscular trace, a neurological template of the movement over and over and over until it's just machine-like. Unfortunately, we've already established some of those things in our body because they're like this. You know, they're like, they're not inefficient and they're, they're vague. They're not targeted, okay? I think I'm over-explaining this. Um, so we, you know what we're gonna do now? So now I want you a new partner, number one, However you do it, it doesn't matter to me. My suggestion is forward. And it might be out here, it might be, but follow all the way through with your body and move her weight. Just go slowly. Now, if your partner is gonna take their body weight behind their hand, move your skull, and you insist on staying there, you're gonna hurt your neck. So if you feel this happening, just the flex is in, just okay, absorb that. That's what it feels like to get pushed. And you'll see, once they begin to move, do I, am I reaching for her, or is my body coming through and driving her? So that's feedback. That's what I mean by mindful training, is you'll feel the feedback from your body in every single piece of it. And then it's like, ah, I, need to, I need to come through more, I need to come through more. And she's going to be your partner. She's going to give you something to deal with that she can then experience. She's not going to fight with you. She's not going to make it hard for you to do. And you can find people trained with that are male. All, all males have a chromosome problem. They have a Y chromosome. <laughs> it's not their fault. <laughs> uh, but find people who are willing to train with you a certain way. All right? And then you can start to develop your skill around. Some people are really tall and I can't get access to their head. I work with Tom McKenna on Hapkido. He's very much taller than me. But I can't always reach his head. You know, sometimes I have to break his posture first. So I might, I might like, this, pretend you're much taller and I want to hit your head, I, I might need to break, bring you to me before I can hit your head. So there's lots of ways that you have to think about acquiring the target. We can't really, we're all the same height, so we're not going to get to play with some of that, but just keep in mind that there's ways to break the balance. Okay? Questions? Oh, let, let me look at number two. Number two. Now, I, I see this done different ways. Sometimes I see people who just sort of hit this. Is that what you guys are doing? Or, 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 is, it, or is it this? One usually. My suggestion is so because what that does is allows this to happen. As opposed to this net is now out of position. It has to come all the way back. Meanwhile, she's got another yeah. hand. Okay, so don't really hit me, but hit me in the face. Mm -hmm. okay. As opposed to I mean, it's the same idea. I mean, I guess I could come into here. thinking about what's most efficient. My follow-up, because she's dynamic, she's not going to stand and pose for me. She's going to do something else. She already has something else in mind. So she grabs me. Mm -hmm. I'm already in this position. She's going to, yeah, she's going to pull me, or she's going to do this to me. Here, let me pull you. Okay. To get access. Right. Um, so if she's going to pull me to the next hand, right, I, have to, I have to be able to counter that hand. So my inclination is hopefully. So I might have to address the threat in order to make the technique work, depending on which energy she's giving me. So my suggestion is practicing this way, as opposed to this way. She kind of brings me away from the target. Right, but anyway, play with it, slow motion, full contact. Okay? Say different partner switch? Different partner. Okay. No tune B. <laughs> Spatially dyslexic. Give me your hand. Right, I'm going to pull you. Don't let me move. You resist. Okay? Resist hard. Resist. Bend your knees. You put your weight into it. Okay, she's very soft. Okay, stay in that same position. I'll give you that hand. Resist. Uh, resist. Uh, yeah. Okay. If you have a mixed presentation of your body, you allow the person to apply torque to your spine on this axis. So if you're trying to move efficiently, and you're like in here, it's like they're going to twist your spine and bring you right into their own strike. So you should be here. So the practice is not, hey, 
It's here. This is this. Only it looks like this, so you know, you know, situation. Okay? All right. Here, this motion. If I'm going to really lay this person down, I'm going to use this, right? I'm going to use my waist. So feel this. Okay, so it's not. That's my hand. The other thing is, um, I know that we're taught knife hand. Pseudo doesn't actually mean knife hand. Pseudo means sword hand. So anywhere from here to here, sword blade. If I think I'm going to use this in a real fight, you've got to be pretty darn accurate. This is a lot of dense bone. I mean, no offense. <laughs> We all have a lot of dense bone. I mean, it protects the brain. It's put dense, some of the densest bone in the body, particularly here. Some more dense than that. Yeah, some more dense. <laughs> it's not just dense. It's got these weird contour, you know, planes. So if you hit, an, if you have gloves on, it'll grab the glove material, will grab the contours of the skull, transfer energy. But in a, when a in a bare hand, it's, it's likely to buckle. If I'm trying to get just this much onto a bony surface that's got odd shapes harder than others. Um, I'm just as likely to break my hand. Okay, so the, 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 the hand is just a bunch of bone connected with soft tissue. It's really weird. It's sort of like, so this is a solid looking surface, but I mean, <laughs> these are just bones floating in, right? So if I hit not exactly in the right place, I might be able to break my hand on these small bones. So what, so what I'm thinking is to hit her, maybe think anywhere from here to here. Use your whole body weight, boom, through her. We're going slow motion, full contact, but very slow motion so we should have no injuries. I want you to really feel your body come through. Move your hip through the target, not just the hand. Okay? Thank you. But if I move, I don't set down. I just have to stay mobile. I move my body. Because everything has to come from here. Have you ever broken boards with a knife hand? are here. I don't go. <laughs> I can do that. I don't need to be here. <laughs> if I do this, I just reveal my secret identity. <laughs> um, I, okay. So, so to break to break thing an object here, I, w I need to bring my hand in conjunction with my center line of my body. I'm going to use my hip. Right. Same thing with the body. If I'm going to break a body, I need to bring my hip into it. If I'm going to use it this way, my hip has to move, not just the arm. Okay, so that's why where I want you to go really slow. I want you to feel like, like, yeah, I did that, but the uh, balance is off. What would I, what would I need to do to correct it? Oh yeah, that's more comfortable. So just going slowly allows us because we hurry through everything and it lets us hurry past the mistakes. So then, in a live situation, all those mistakes. Are still there. Okay. All right. Keep working. Thank you guys. I got in trouble. I got um, so when I'm feeling like I want to feel in a good athletic position that I can move my mass efficiently. If my legs are up straight, I end up using my upper body only. And that's not where your strength is. Your strength as a woman is here. Your core and using your hips. So the more I'm centered here. When I go to move, like to do this technique, if I'm using my body weight is coming under the technique, for instance, that's going to be more powerful than if I'm here, just trying to use my arm. Okay, so your challenge, I guess, you know, as a smaller person, is to figure out how to mobilize as much of your mass into every technique as you can, because it's just physics, right? Uh, force equals mass times acceleration. The faster you go, the more mass you bring with it. That's you're going to have more force at the end. That's immutable. So the challenge is, how do I bring all that mass into everything I do? And the way you'll do that is by moving slowly through the technique, figuring out where can I, where do I have to go? What does my body have to do in order to transfer that energy? Okay. So uh, it's not unusual for us to spend you know, three days on like one technique. <laughs> because because you're engaged with a process and it's not just okay I know that one let me do the next one. Right. Right. Okay. Practice. The next thing, think like oh that's interesting yeah I was going for a head but you know 
she flinched in her shoulder. She flinched a little bit, and that was enough to stop. So what does that tell me? It means, OK, got to explore this position a little bit more. So maybe not so much here and then moving, because that always catches this. And it'll be different for every person, because some people are really tall, and you definitely the shoulder will always be in your way. For a really tall person, it might make more sense to come here first. Like, use your whole body weight and break the rib, then come up to the face. OK, so, um, or, or it might be, I need to get to this side of the neck. So maybe, maybe instead of doing this, maybe instead of doing this kind of movement, I do this kind of movement. With this foot. That puts me on this side. You know what I mean? So, so just experiment with where do I need to go versus either one. There's no wrong or right. And you'll just discover intuitively which way your body wants to move. The more of these things you do, your body will just flow into a pattern it recognizes based on lots of different stuff that you can't even keep track of cognitively. It'll just because your body, brain body, is reading the array of stimuli. But if you do them a lot, lots of different ways, figure out which way, more and more options will go more, uh, be available to you quicker. Okay, so keep working. I'm Gabby Yankos. Thank you. Let's work the sequence. That's what I see. Mm -hmm. um, but when, when, when I do this, my targets are gone from this hand. This is a long way to go. And this allows me, like if, if you're going to see, you see my hand. Mm -hmm. I see. It's going to come. What are you going to do when I hit you? I'm coming at you at the same time. Oh, I'm going right, to try right, it. Right. Okay, we're going to maybe claw it. As opposed to. <laughs> She's like, it works. <laughs> Boom. So it's not. That's right. And this is this is right. something we already know. Yeah. Uh -huh. and also, watch what happens if I move through her. Watch what happens to her body. Yeah, she's already. Yep. You know, so so using trying figuring out like what would upset the body as I move. having to keep moving back each time because my mass is coming through where her position is. Right? So that's slow working, slow working, then you get a chance to kind of feel, oh, hey, let's see, let's see. So on the topic of movement and moving backwards, just watching just, watching just your footwork, and maybe you were just trying to stay in position. Yeah. If you do have to move backwards, I mean, she was staying like this. What is your, do you, do you hear? Are you sideways? Just in terms of movement, is there a, a You're pattern looking for you rules. Choose? You're looking for rules. So, oh. so the way you discover that is let's work it. All right, so come, come hit me. Okay, hit me. I'm hitting. Come on, try hitting me. Okay. So I'm moving on a line. I just right. have to keep dealing with the same problem over again. Right, right. Right, right. So come hit me. Right, so I mean, Moving, moving to the side, getting to here might be better. So some of it is what energy if I'm being given, how much time do I have? Like, I might just be able to get my feet under me and not be able to get enough place to move laterally, depending on how fast this is coming. But I can tell you the more you practice moving laterally, push me. Stand up. Oh. what I want you to do. Okay. Just, just let me do this. You can't just get it unless you're Keanu Reeves. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just stick it in your hand. You have to actually go through the process. And what I, you know, what I tell people is, unfortunately, you have to do this way past the point it was ever interesting. <laughs> There's just no other way to get into your body. What do I want to bring? What do I want to expose to this kind of inquiry? I have a couple one steps. Yeah. All right. I do too. Yeah, one no self defense? You guys are good with self defense? Uh, I do. No, I never do it. Well, that, I just want to kind of stay focused. Yeah. Number 30. Tom, show me what number 3 is. 30. 30. Show me what number 30 is. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking one step's hands. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm with you. We can do one step's on Friday. We can do one step. Yeah, we can always do, we can do a whole series of these things. But I, and I'm willing to do one step today. I just want to, I just want to show you self one defense. more thing. Okay, self so. defense. Uh, um, there was a self, I, I made a mistake. I don't yeah. know. So, um, was it 11? So, it was a side grab. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't Shoulder. figure out what was happening. So, I, I have been taught down to kind of break the grip down and then up with the wrist. Mm -hmm. And kicking, and what I was doing was, as I was doing this to get my balance, I was stepping away from my partner, and I couldn't reach her. Oh yeah. yeah. So I mean, I don't, I don't know if, I mean, that was just. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that you did the analysis. You say, oh, I'm, I'm stepping away, so where do I have to go? And it was not reaching contact. I'm like, we don't do enough contact. Yeah. So you, slow motion, full contact. That's the trick, I think, for self defense mm -hmm. to figure out where position needs to be. So have you seen this? So um. Terry, come grab. Grab, grab my. Oh my goodness. Okay. So what is what is this one? Sixteen. Is something like this? Yeah. 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 Four. And I see that one. It's like I, I'm surprised this ever works. It's hard. I mean, yeah. she's jacking me up. She's stronger than me. Yeah. yeah. So my suggestion is break her balance, move her max. Okay, so I'm here, and I want to move her first. Uh, before I come to here, see see how her shoulders are over her hips. Okay. That's her, this is the most uh, structurally sound she has. My, I want to break her balance. Breaking her balance means taking her upper body and moving it past the place of her face. So, um, as I do this, if she's got me and she's stronger than me, which is the case, which is the case, otherwise she wouldn't be doing this. And I go like this, and my body's still here, her body's still straight up and down, and I go like this, she's not going to let me. She's, and the longer I try, she's going to headbutt me or knee me or something. So that's going to happen. So, you know, if I'm here, move. See, what I'm doing is I'm using my elbow on this arm to break it, to break it down. But then I can do this. So those are what I'm talking about, like self-defense. Oh, yeah, I know that one. But think about working with a stronger partner. Which ones are troublesome? <clears throat> Maybe we should play with this one. Okay, break, break, and turn your hip. So the other thing is, I, you know, I, I may not have the upper body strength she has to grab. I break her down. Now, rather than my arm, my shoulders, maybe. Good luck, though. I turn my hip. My hands are here in front of my body. I turn my hip. My whole body. That's a really different experience for her. Okay? These are smaller movements, but they're whole body movements, as opposed to arm. Okay? So why don't we play with that one, and if there's a, if there's a one step you guys want to do in our last half hour or something. Unless there's another one of these. There's self-defense, which never seems to be effective. Well, three and six. Three, though I don't know anybody would come up and grab you. Like, 
like yeah. that. Maybe they would. Um, but six is just a ponytail, and the solution is just to turn, right? Isn't this six? Because you're just turning in? Oh, you're talking about key down. No. What's, 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 what, what number is ponytail well, grabbing? We, we, well, we don't have five, one. It's oh. six and seven or five and six. They're, 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 they're doing different numbers. Mm -hmm. Is there, is there we one? don't have there's, a there's ponytail. There's a grab behind, right? Yeah. Smack, smack, yeah. Grab the collar. Collar, there's, yeah. There's, there's, so collar. collar is, right, for us that's seven. But this, there is one Same that idea. grabs a ponytail. Mm -hmm. Same and idea. And it's just twist and turn and start punching. But at least the seven, I feel like they've got you, but you've got them a little bit. You can even tip your head back to keep their hand where they are. It's a different type of grab, whereas if it's your hair, it's attached to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The clothing is on me, but it's not But, but let's, just, let's just think about this. What? what? Show me what, let's just simulate what this assault looks like if it's real, real intent. Show me what it looks like. Where am I grabbing her collar or her ponytail? Grab the collar we'll to say it's safer. All right, whatever. To me, I'd be, I'd, I'd be all over her. That or relax, just go, I don't want to hurt you, so just would you, wherever you feel me moving you, just move with it, okay? You're pulling back, yes, yes sir. Mm -hmm. All right, pulling you into whatever the next thing is. It's not this. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. This is not true. Right, right. So what she needs to do is, is solve the problem. What's the problem? Me. Mm -hmm. So do not really hurt me. I'll try <laughs> Full contact. Yes. <laughs> what was the target? Your face. Your Don't face. stop. Don't stop. Hit. Slow motion, full contact. Pretty precise on the knuckle. I would use anything along this line, come all the way through, all the way through, all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. Right into my neck. Vagus nerves on either side of the neck, carotid artery on either side of the neck. That is beautiful and it's imprecise. And this is made to fit into this space. Okay, maybe you can smash the face, that's not bad. But if you're looking to put me down, you're stupid, man. No, not that kind of put down. If you're if you're if you're, gonna, if you're looking to put me down for real, then you want to knock me out. Yes. Yeah. Because you, you're hitting with this. Yes. So slow down even slower than that. Okay. By going slowly, you have you can be mindfully figure out where your body. Sir, before you start, now you've broken her balance somewhat by pulling her backwards. The solution would be to step back for her to step. So come right, come come into me. Come into me. Boom! There it is. Being moved back, oh, Bang. or maybe even this. Okay, so she does. She's pulling me back, you know, or whatever. We always say, "Well, you can look to see where they are." It's like they're not letting you look. They're not standing still. It's not. It's not static. It's an assault from behind. It's not, if it's somebody grabbing you and holding you, they're playing with you, and you don't want to knock out your friend. Otherwise, if it's an assault, they, you know, by the time you process, oh. Yeah. So what we have to train ourselves to do is go grab me. Okay, now she's pulling me straight back. Maybe I can bang, 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 whatever's there. Just boom. So you train yourself to do a structure, whatever the structure is. Right. Leading with the elbow, boom, and then. Right, and we do this slowly with our partners. We can do this. So get, get, grab me, but just to be static. Don't actually pull me. Okay. So I can kind of see where you're by. Okay, so I can, I can kind of get this sense of. And she adds some, a little bit of energy to it, a little bit of energy to it. Go ahead. Okay, now it's like my body, I have to step here. Yeah. It might be, because it's dynamic, I actually don't get to the target I want. But it might be that as I'm turning, as I'm turning, maybe I'm turning and I, maybe I break to here, and I latch on, and then I try to here. You know what I mean? It's like it's dynamic, it's imprecise. So, but the more you go through the different ways of moving and a different relationship between the two bodies, more and th more things will present themselves to you. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's there. I never saw that before. Because I'm doing everything really fast. Okay. What would you do? Like you said, you, they're not going to let you turn around and look. Yeah. So you're on the her outside, not her inside. Would you do the same uh, uh, sort yeah, of? Because, because you don't know, right? I don't correct. know what hand she's using. Because she's pulling me. Can I go this way? Yeah. Sir. Everything doesn't have to be an impact. I go here, 
I stick my finger in there and then up there. So I mean, once I'm on top of it, then I just use that. I could use this into the back of the neck. Sir. Right. I use my body body weight into the. It's like the idea of a sword. sword, if I'm going to cut meat, a body, I need to use my body to draw the blade through the target. It's not, it's not a club, and it's not a meat cleaver. It's a cutting tool. But when I do that, my body has to cut through the target. Hands are different. Who's who can fall off? <laughs> it's the same motion as I'm cutting with a blade. In terms of my body, it's not just pushing with my shoulder. It's my body, it's this. Right. So that's the idea. The blade is no different. But it's always the same motion in terms of the body's um, dynamic center, um, rotation, all those things. Completeness almost. Complete, and, and, and everything uniform, everything coordinated, finishing together. That's all the forms are, all the motions. They're all, everything stops. Start, stop, there's no, and that's, and that's ideal. And that, that, that concept, even though it's an abstraction in the form, but that idea of movement, it should be in everything. Right? Um, let's, let's go ahead and practice then that one double lapel grab. Practice breaking the person's balance. Go slowly. There's no reason to go fast. You already know how to do it fast. But when you start to slow down, you'll see all the things you don't know you're doing. So let's just take the time and just sort of like play with this idea how does my hip turn? How, where does their balance go? Do they st can they still fight me? If they're grabbing me like this, what's next? They haven't signed a contract that they're not going to let go with one hand. <laughs> I mean, I mean, anything, it's still alive, it's still there. So, but you have to deal with the person. Break their balance first, and then you can do whatever technique you want. Okay, let's play with that. is right in front of me. So we get so lost into, I have to do the technique. You move the technique up, it's failing. I don't get to go, hey, can we start again? Right, I broke her balance, I'm going to turn. It's like it's not going to work. There's the head. Boom. Boom. So it's whatever's there. That's the advantage of training this way is um, you, you have your agenda in mind. You want to do this technique. But if it's fine, it's just not working. My body's out of position. They're bigger than I thought. Their hands tangled in my bock. And they, they can't let go of it even if they wanted to. Or whatever. Then, okay, so I'm, I'm going to flow. I'm going to flow what's there. Oh, there, there's that. And if you go slow, you'll see it all. You know, it's like your targets just present themselves. And you just become aware. Oh, there's a tool right there. Oh, oh it's like he's a big guy. It's like, I can't move him. You know what? His face is right there. That means his eyes are right there. Right? So whatever presents itself. Right. Good. Keep working. Do you guys... By backing up instead of stepping to the side, she was rushing me. Yeah, show to us. So, and so she, and so I, instead of going to the side, I went back, and she just moved right in on me. And yeah. what happened was, 
we ended up like this. Yeah, okay, that'll happen. Yeah. You know, so, I don't know, it was kind of neat to see when you make mistakes. Right, and, and you're going slow enough that it's controlled, and you don't just panic. You go, okay, that was interesting. Where did, what, so let's do that again. Where did it go? Oh, oh I see what's I see my foot is, that's why that's happening. My foot is behind the other foot, and I can't make the adjustment to keep my balance. So you'll discover what that is if you go slowly. Yes. And then you can make the adjustment. Okay, so next time what I need to do is more active. So rather than becoming passive, if you guys me, like, okay, now I have to do all this. Maybe the first thing is move her back. Then break. You know what I mean? Then boom, there's another shot. There's another shot. I mean, it's like if you go slowly, everything will present itself. I didn't get to do that technique. <laughs> but every time the technique fails, don't, treat, treat, don't train yourself to go, oh, it didn't work, and stop. Yeah. Train yourself to like, okay, it didn't work, what, what's next? Okay. Now I'll figure out why it didn't work. I'll keep working toward actually doing the technique I'm being taught. But in terms of my general martial arts education, I want, I want my body to always be in motion, always working the problem. And then I, put, I solve the problem a different way. Okay, let's start again. Let me see if I can get this technique you're trying to teach me. If it works, yeah, I learned. I, I got another repetition of the, on the right track. If it's wrong, at least I learned how to capitalize on whatever presented itself. So always train that. Good, those are good.